You know something, it's really great that all these events that we've been going to for time and time again are springing up again because we've had a few years of us just sat there watching them on a TV screen and that's a bit boring, isn't it? Let's be honest. So when we heard that there's an opportunity to share and to go to a field where basically a load of men have a right laugh, we jumped at the chance. So to tell us more about this is Nathan Blackaby. Good morning, Nathan. Good morning, sir. Thanks for having us on. Now, I must say, wow. So you're on the video right now, yeah. and I wish I had a head of hair like that. How long has <laughs> that taken to grow? I thought, mate, I thought you were going to talk about my soundproofing tiles. Well, <laughs> I mean, the hair's probably more impressive, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> It's been great. So first lockdown, uh, I, I had a really short haircut and my family were like, grow your hair out. Let's see what happens. So that's what I've done. So two years in and uh, yeah, it's doing all right. You're almost like a sort of, um, you're almost like, and I don't know the actor I'm thinking of. So I'm thinking of the bloke who <laughs> used to, never mind, this is going nowhere, I'll be honest with you. And you aren't here just to talk about how dashingly handsome you look. You're here to talk about uh, Christian Vision for Men, first of all. So yes. we'll talk about this organisation and then we'll move on to why you've decided to do this incredible event. So Christian Vision for Men, tell us yeah. about that. Mate, so CVM, Christian Vision for Men, has been around for over 30 years. Um, charity based in, well, just near Sheffield, Chesterfield. Um, our vision and our sort of calling, if you like, is to introduce men to the truth of Jesus Christ. So we're a Christian charity. And we, we come up with a load of creative ways, resources, events, and we partner with the National UK Church to, yeah, get the gospel, get the truth of Jesus in front of blokes and just make that introduction. Um, so that's that's what we're about, really. And I love the fact that you sound nearly as working class as me, but you're <laughs> from the other end. You're down south. Are you a true Cockney geezer? No, well, no, not really. I'm not. I'm not as Cockney as perhaps I sound. But um, I was born in Harlow in Essex. Spent twenty years of my life down in the, down in Essex, isn't it? <laughs> that's it. That's what we were waiting for. <laughs> so. Tell us, because do you think that maybe the way that you are with your accent and yeah. should we say streetwise? Are we allowed to say that? That's not offensive, what, is it? Am I streetwise? Is that, is that well, your... I was about to ask, do you think that people are a bit more trusting of you than they would be if you were to wear a dog collar, for example? Because it, you do yeah. sound like a genuine bloke. You sound well, like an everyday person. <laughs> yeah, and that's, mate, that's one of the beauties about CV and what we're trying to do. You know, I'm into my motorbikes. I love boxing. I've also got daughters that I'm, you know, I love doing their hair and, but I am, I am a bloke and testosterone is pumping, but I am also a ordained minister, believe it or not. But uh, just trying to make the Christian faith as relevant as we can to men, because I think they've, they look into church culture and they often can be switched off immediately from the truth of the gospel. So we're just trying to present it in, in a genuine way. We're not, we're not faking anything. It's just who we are. And you were on Steve Legg's show a few weeks ago, and yeah. I loved your response to the question that Steve asked. And he said, why do men get bored at church? Why don't yeah. they want to go to church? So can you just share with us? Because a lot of men, they do think, actually, why do I want to sit there? Why do I want to do singing out loud? And why do I want to hear from this book? So yeah. tell us, why is it so important, church? Well, I, I, would, I would just probably take a step back from why is church so important as to why is following Jesus so important and, and of course we want and we'd love to see blokes plugged into church communities and with blokes who get them understand them can journey this with them you know it, this is really important stuff but why why follow Jesus mate honestly for me following Jesus has been the most radical thing in my life and and I think sometimes we sell this short for blokes we can present a gospel or or an invitation to follow Jesus that's quite flowery, that's quite pretty, that's, you know, very emotional based. But following Jesus has cost me so much in my life to put him first, to to live the way that he asked me to live. You know, a practical example, to love my enemies, to to not seek vengeance, to forgive those who, who persecute me or, or, or hurt me. I mean, it is it goes against the grain. It's an opposite spirit thing. And for me, following Jesus has been the most amazing journey of discovering who he is, discovering 
the man that I know I need to be, that he helps me to be, mate, it is just incredible. And then the overflow from that is seeing blokes plugged into church communities with their families, with their kids. It's, it's amazing. And it's so good to hear you say that, because I think as men, we need to be a bit more open to this and we need to yeah. share our feelings a bit more. I mean, we always hear about mental health and how it's important yeah. that you talk about stuff. But I also think it's important that as Christian men, we aren't scared to talk about our faith. And we're not scared to talk about our struggles, because I think there's beauty in those struggles. Oh, mate, it's spot on. I think you're absolutely right. And yeah, encouraging Christian blokes to be real about the life that they're living. No veneer. I mean, I, I bought into a little bit of a structure where you, you might resonate with this. After church on a Sunday morning, you have a cup of tea, you have a stale custard cream, and it's all very polite. And how's life? Yeah, 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 it's fine. When in actual fact, it's not fine. And we can wrestle with stuff. We might be self-medicating. We might be hiding secret addictions, wrestling with our kids, struggling in our marriages. Yet, yeah, on Sunday, we go, oh, yeah, mate, yeah, it's all good, it's all good, when it's not. And it might be good, but what I'm saying is blokes need that space to be real, raw, no veneer, no gloss. And I think in those places, when we put some evangelistic or, or evangelism thread and DNA, we say, look, it is about you becoming the man you need to be, but it's also about a rescue mission of your mates who don't know Jesus. Something changes in blokes' lives. It's, it's amazing, mate. I really love what you're doing and you're doing it in this field. So tell <laughs> us about this because it's an incredible, I mean, I've got friends who have been, I've never been before, but we're looking forward to being there with right. the team and we're going to meet you. We're going to really be inspired. I can't wait for this, but I've probably not been doing it justice when I've been saying that it's a load of men in a field having a right laugh. <laughs> it does sound well, a bit weird when you say it like that, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. It, the gathering's a bit of a, weird culture in itself it is a festival basically um and and my mate beachy who sort of founded it 10 years ago he got tired of christian conferences and he was like let's put on an event that i actually want to be at so i want motorbikes on display i want to see nice cars you know i'd like a bar there i'd like a comedian live music you know so we've thrown in all this stuff inflatables and it's not it's not massively blokey in that sense it's not like we're not We've not got flamethrowers or, you know, but we're just trying to do stuff that we enjoy, that we like being around. You know, there's bacon and loads of food and typical stuff. But we provide guys with a, a really powerful worship experience. So a couple of thousand blokes in a field, you know, Graham Kendrick leads our worship and it's different. It's just different. And guys who don't know Jesus at all suddenly encounter this experience of worship. And then we've got what I like to call old school sort of, uh gospel tent mission preaching so we just tell blokes about jesus no frill no veneer there's no one playing keyboard in the background to create an atmosphere we tell them who jesus is and we invite blokes to follow him in a very practical and real way so we kind of use all the fun stuff just to have a great time with fellas and hang out and then we present the gospel and and the cool thing is blokes it's not a church environment so men don't have to come and sit in the in the tent they can just listen outside or lay on their sleeping bag or, you know, there's no pressure, but we just create that space. And mate, over 10 years, we've seen a thousand blokes make first time commitments to Jesus. That's amazing. It is incredible. And I love the fact that because sometimes as Christian men in churches, we feel a bit guilty talking about the fact that we like to get muddy. We like boxing. We like engines because yeah, yeah. there's almost this society says that actually you're not allowed to be happy in the gender identity that you are. Now, we're not <laughs> going to go down that route because that <laughs> yeah. is a sticky Ooh. slope and we don't want to touch upon that. But it is good that this event's taking place where it's a celebration of being a man. Yeah, I, mate, again, we are on very delicate ground with this stuff and, and rightly so because, you know, it needs to be challenged and kept in check. But there is a huge amount of blokes who just love that stuff. And we're not saying it's better. It's the only form of expressing who you are as a bloke. We're just saying there's guys out there that enjoy this stuff. They like looking at cars and bikes and listening to a V8 engine. Or So we provide that. But why we're doing it is the important element. We're not doing it just to say, yeah, we're men. Let's stand and be bit. No, we're creating this environment to say, look, this stuff's great but this is even better. Let's introduce you to Jesus. 
and let's get your life back on track. Let's discover the bloke you're meant to be. And Jesus gives us all of that. So these these bits and pieces that we use, yeah, blokes love them, but it's just an inroad for us to say, look, there's something bigger in life, and it is Jesus. And you mentioned that in the time this has been taking place, a thousand men have right, come mate. to Christ. Yeah. And do they come back and you actually see the physical change in them and the mental yeah. change in them? Yeah. So not all, not all come back. I mean, guys will go out and do different things and we, we keep up. Well, initially after the event, each bloke will get his contact details taken. We try and plug them into a church or men's group. But a lot of the blokes that come to the event, have been brought by their mates who have been running through CVM sort of evangelism strategy of, of winning blokes. So they're not on their own. They're plugged back into friendships and groups. Mate, some of the stories we've got, one guy in particular, he gave his life to Jesus on the night that he'd written in his diary that he would take his life. And his mates brought him to the event. He didn't even know where he was going. He had no tent, no sleeping bag. And on the Friday night, before we'd even done much at all, just in response to worship and a prayer, he ran to the front where we have a massive cross and he just gave his life to Jesus. Amazing. It's so powerful. And I was going to ask you, so there's journeys that you've heard of people. And is it a challenge finding a church or a men's group, which I guess carries on from what you're doing? So it's not just about the bikes and the engine oil. So no, no. It isn't just about that, but is it maybe a challenge finding a church that these men would like? Does that make sense? So yeah, is it yeah. tricky sort of jumping from what uh, the gathering is all about into what we call a general church? Yeah. So so we we do a big piece on working with our church network to to do slight tweaks to the church culture um, that, that not make it necessarily man friendly, but just aware of where blokes are. So men will make an immediate decision on church and what they expect this church will be like literally as they walk in the door i mean for a silly example i remember being greeted once at a church i was brand new to by a guy at the front in a, in a handmade woolen technicolor dream coat uh, i'm not joking and as i approached the door he kissed me on both of my cheeks on my face uh, it didn't go down very well and all i'm saying is a silly example but the way we welcome blokes in the way we create the environment in church the decoration the way we preach the music all of this stuff will communicate whether a guy is welcome there whether it's something for him or whether this is just a, a dead message that he can just walk away from and, and i'm not saying create men only churches but the way we work with the culture of church and little changes to the culture uh, you know where we start asking questions is this going to be relevant to a bloke on monday when he's back at work in the factory and there's you know adult magazines being passed around is he going to still remember what we talked about on sunday at church so we're just trying to say look let's be aware of the blokes around our church communities and how we can reach and engage them a hand knitted technical a dream coat oh, now mate, honestly there are two people there who <laughs> need to be told off the person who made it and the person yeah. who wears it yeah yeah it, it was Truly phenomenal. incredible yeah and he, he was greeting everyone with a kiss and okay it's a bit odd, but my example, like if one of my, if I'd have brought one of my mates <laughs> from down the pub along, <laughs> it wouldn't have gone down very well at all. That's the thing, isn't it? Because do you think maybe as Christians, we tend to be a bit more accepting of things like that? I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but yeah. if that was to happen in a pub, if that was to happen in Asda, you'd basically be calling the police. Mate, it is, yeah, you would. It is weird. And and please in my heart, I'm committed to church. Like I've been a church minister, as I say, I've led a church, deeply committed to church. But we have to be aware that we do weird things. And and just recently I went to a church outside the wall. So it was it was billed as church in a in a picnic area, which was really lovely. And there was some amazing stuff, but the culture of painting stones or creating bracelets with jesus hearts on it's weird and what i don't understand is why can't we just be christians that do normal things like we normally do but invite <laughs> non-christian mates and just not make it weird <laughs> I love this. I really do, because this is what my heart has been saying for such a long time. <laughs> I, I don't want to go and paint pebbles. No. And I'll do no, it. I, hear my heart. I'll do it because my daughters love it. No problem. Yeah. But it's weird that that's how we transpose church to be a visible thing for people that don't know Jesus. I just it don't work for me. 
So tell us about this event then, because uh, we need to get tickets. And you were telling yeah. us that um, there's only about 150 tickets left on this. Yeah, that's right, mate. It's been amazing. So there were there was a point during COVID lockdowns and the various restrictions. We thought, oh, can we even do this? Because it logistically is a nightmare. <laughs> But um, yeah, we've really, it's gone full steam. So there's about 150 tickets left. You can head over to thegatheringformen.com and you can find out everything there. It's 129 quid to get a ticket for the weekend, Friday to Sunday. Um, you can camp, you can bring a tent, you can bring a caravan, or you can stay in a and b down the road. And, and what I would say, if you, if you cannot afford a ticket, then email the office and you can find the, the link there. We might be able to help. You know, we don't want any bloke to miss out. Uh, we do need to sell the tickets, but what I will say is there's been there's been guys who have like given us ten grand or fifteen grand and said, "Look, that's to cover some blokes who can't afford to come. That's to pay for some bills." And so the generosity of other blokes means that we can get some guys there that that might need to hear the gospel, but are struggling to buy a ticket. Do you know we're so blessed to have men like you doing this work, Nathan, who aren't afraid to actually, you know, nail their colours to the mast and say, yes, I'm a man, but I'm also a Christian, and I believe yeah. that Jesus changed li changes lives. So Thank the you, website mate. is thegatheringformen.com. Now, I'm going to test your knowledge very quickly. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, I, well, you should know this, and if you don't, it will be rather embarrassing, but I want to ask you, how many days, how many hours, and how many minutes is it until the gathering starts? Starts. mate that's unbelievable i think it's about 50 days nine hours 13 minutes and 45 seconds <laughs> well congratulations you're clearly <laughs> on the website as well so <laughs> it's the gathering for men.com and you can get your tickets up there and as nathan said if you like the sound of this but you're thinking you know what we can't afford it then get in touch with the office because you never know there's people who may want to bless you so get in touch with the team and hopefully we'll see you there and we'll definitely see you there nathan you will Apparently, mate. uh steve leg is hosting now don't let that affect ticket sales will you <laughs> He is. He is absolute legend. He's been with us years doing that. He's brilliant. <laughs> the seasoned pro. And it's incredible yeah. when you see him do his work. It's <laughs> obvious he's been doing it for such a long time oh, because he just, yeah. he's got his act down. He's fabulous, our Steve Legg. Uh, thank you very much, Nathan. You take thank care. You, and we'll see you in, what was the calculation again? We'll 50, see you 50 days. Nine hours and 12 minutes. I'm literally counting the seconds right now. <laughs>